boring, yeah, yeah Welcome back, y'all. We're back. Um, first yes. of all, before we do anything, please, 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 we were having such great momentum, so let's keep it going. Yes. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Go and rate us if you're listening on the um, audio platforms. Yes. If you are watching on YouTube, please leave us comments and subscribe. Please click the button. Click yes. the subscribe button. Click subscribe. Because our subscriptions don't match our views. Something is not adding up. Because y'all okay? watching, but y'all not y'all clicking not that clicking button. And click that button, you know, okay? I will say, we have like a midnight crew, because I be uploading the video right at midnight and y'all be on this bitch at 12 y'all be on your zoom watching the video so i appreciate but that. you know me too though i'm a part of that crew like when it goes up if you, up? Look at you, you. know podcast you know night be exciting for me so you know when stuff goes up i'll be like okay so i can text you hmm if I can text it you, comes, if I can text you before ten a.m., I've been doing better with that. You have. I've been you waking have. up. My body is waking me up earlier. Now. You want to know what that is? Age. Aging. Yeah, I'm yeah. turning into my nana. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that kind of goes into my joke of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 29 now. I Ayo. Like, bah, 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 bah. But like, I feel like my body knew it was my birthday. Mm. Because that first period after your birthday of a new age oh my always God. beats your ass, and it's just like. Who did the fucking iOS update to my fucking uterus like this? Because this shit, I was like fighting for my life for the past like ten days. Like my period just Your ended period like last yesterday. ten days. No, my PMS was aggressive. Like mm-hmm. I did not have bad cramps. I may be cramped for one day, which mm-hmm. is fine. But I would have damn near rather the, like when I have cramps, I have cramps. Maybe day one and two, mm-hmm. and I'm fine. Mm-hmm. I had PMS like eight days before. Like it was one day I was sitting on the toilet and I like did like this. And I grazed my nipples. It hurt so bad. I'm like, why are my titties so tender? Like the tender titty was killing me. Then I was tender titty. (laughs) I was exhausted. Like I literally felt like I had just like bags of bricks on my back. I was so tired. Mm. I've been sleeping profusely now. I will say, I am the lowest weight I've been in almost a year. Brr, brr, brr. Skinny, brr, bitch, brr, brr. skinny bitch loaded brr, brr, brr. <laughs> because I've been sleeping so much. Mm-hmm. I think one of my things, I don't shit enough and I don't sleep enough, which is why I can't mm-hmm. lose the weight. I've been sleeping so much and I have not been to the gym in a month. I've lost the weight. I, I physically couldn't go to the gym because I'm so tired, mm-hmm. but because I'm sleeping so much, my body's like, you know what, let's. Yeah, and you're not eating while you sleep, so. Yeah. You can't be eating if you're yeah. sleeping. Yeah. So I'm down to one That's what I be doing when I be fasting and shit, which I need to fast this week. I need to fast and pray. I be knocked the fuck out. I can't like people who fast and like stay awake and like do shit. More power to you. Sleep for dinner. Not me. I'm going to fucking bed. No, my my. I think that first period after your birthday is your body punishing you for not having a baby. Yeah. Like I think it's like get grow another year older and don't push your baby out this pussy. See what happened. I think that's why. Like I I'll, I'll, I'll fucking knock you out, man. I think that's why. I'm gonna fucking say it. I'm gonna fucking say it. That's so what that's your body's what my body doing. has been doing. Um, but other than your that, your sex drive is gonna get weird next year. I'm Your not, sex drive's gonna get weird next year, my boy. Yeah. Ooh, we already got that thumper on it right now. Listen, let it, me tell you something. First of all, everybody knows I like to hunch, but like I I have never experienced anything like how I think like the night of my birthday, it was like a new level of horniness that I have never experienced my whole life. I've heard of Which I, I, you know, go through periods, I, and I've talked about this on Twitter, I go through periods of sex repulsion because of like, I haven't been assaulted, and, you know, things that have happened to me physically. I can go a long time without sure. wanting to fuck. Yeah. But baby, that 30 hit me. I would say, mm-t, 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 every time I turn around, I could look at a nigga for too long and just overheat and I had to go sit down somewhere. And my stamina is better now, too, that I'm older. Like, my knees are back to, like, I'm able to ride dick now, like, when I was 20. Hmm. Like, that whole getting tired, I don't, like, I just don't do it no more. I don't know. That's crazy. And, again, I think it's your hormones and your body being, like, make a baby. So. I'm a sex slacker, so, like, riding dick is never anything that I want to do. It's so fun. <laughs> it's such a good time. Sure. It is. You don't have fun? <laughs> I don't understand that. I don't I love it. I mean, I think it's also because I have control issues and I like to, you know, dominate men. Yeah, I have nothing to prove. Uh, you I, know, I'm so. in here like, 
skirt. And then I mean, you know, when I'm a missionary, it's cute, you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you trying to say what's up? Like, you know, I'm cooling, but I don't know. Riding dick is a really good time. No, now when Miss Missionary, I do my part. I fuck back. I got that get over here. I kegel. I do I, my part. But sometimes in missionary, mm -hmm. I, I can look at a man and tell when he's kind of like, it's different kinds of missionary in my opinion. Sometimes a dude is like really locked in with you and it's an experience that y'all are both enjoying at the same time together. And so in those instances, I fuck back. But sometimes when men are fucking and you can tell that they've kind of like zoned out focus, trying not mm -hmm. to like come and shit and they're doing something else mentally because they're trying to like Blast. stay in it. I don't fuck back unless I'm trying to get them to quit. I fuck back when I'm trying to get him to come, a hundred percent. Like, come on, like, give, come, come, on. Get, uh, come, come on, sir. My show for the yeah, come on. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm get tired. out, get out, get out of here. For me, sex is different for me. Put it in I've been reverse, Terry. Same person for years, so it's just like, oh, I love this nigga. So it's not even like fun no more. I mean, in the past two years, I've been fucking like the same two, two and a half niggas. So mm -hmm. I mean, it. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Same thing with you every night, brain. Um, but anyway, yeah, I digress. My uh, joke of the week is that my apartment uh, has started falling apart, and it all happened today. Um, well, I was out of town. First of all, I went on a trip with my mother, and I'm not going to disparage that lady on this trip, but you and I need to talk. That family... <laughs> That family, those generational curses are cursing. Yeah. I mean, ooh, we. Um, but anyway, so I got back in from out of town, and when I got back the other night, I was hearing like some weird noises. So I asked the dog, and I asked Rodney, and said, "Hey, like y'all hear that?" And they like, "I'm sorry, what was Jodeci going to say?" Like sometimes I'll look at Jodeci when something is weird, and I'll be like this, and he'll be like a woo, and he'll like turn his <laughs> head. <laughs> He's not talking, but he'll turn his head like I see you, and you're not crazy. So I was like, y'all hear that noise? And then Rodney was like, yeah, because he housed it for me while I was gone. So he's like, I've been hearing it, you know, on and off. So that's already annoying. So the couple of days I've been back, it's been like mad loud construction noises, which I'm going to tell the rest of it, but I, we can stop there. That's too much. The fucking noise is too much, especially because I'm not working right now. Let me be unemployed in peace. In peace. I want to go to bed. Like, and I cannot do. I want to wake up to nothing because I have nothing to do today. I can't do my underachieving. With this noise. Oh, like, I've got shit to accomplish here. So, when I was trying to get ready today, mind you, I got a late start anyway because I was up very late last night. And I already knew that I was going to kind of be behind the, <laughs> I was going to be kind of behind the eight ball with uh, getting things, you know, ready to go. And so, as I'm starting to, like, I'm so glad that I have braids. Like, I didn't have to do anything to my hair. Mm -hmm. As I'm getting ready to go, the lights just start going off for, like, maybe, like, five or ten minutes at a time and then coming back on. Like, whatever they're doing, first of all, whatever you're doing, I'm not a construction person, it's wrong. Whatever you're doing, that should not be that happening, should not be happening. Over here. Whatever you're doing that's making the lights go on and off in my apartment is crazy. So then, while I'm putting the finishing touches, I'm already late. While I'm putting the finishing touches on my makeup, I'm trying to leave it, whatever. I hear something go, in the bathroom, and I hear Jodeci pitter-patter. His little feet, and he stands next to it, looks up at it, and so I peek my head around the corner. And I said, "What's going on?" Animals be knowing. Well, I said, "Did little Timmy fall down a well? Like, what is the noise happening here?" So I look the ceiling, and it's just like the ceiling in here is sagging. And I said, "Hmm." And I'm like, "Maybe my eyes are deceiving me. I'm a little hungover. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired. Fine." It happens again. I see the ceiling do this, and it goes. And I said, if this ceiling, because now this apartment is going to be in, uninhabitable. Like, I won't be able to live here because it's the fucking shower. Like, it's the bathroom. I'm going to have to go stay with one of my family members. I don't want to do that. I don't want to live with those people. Like, <laughs> I just really don't. So I took a video of it. I sent it to my property manager. And now they're calling me because they're like, oh, well, do you think that maybe we should go over there and leave the door open? I got weed in there. It's a gun in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's shit going it's on. Shit in there. And so the only thing that's keeping them from going over there is the fact that I got a dog. And I'm like, you go over there and surprise that nigga if you want to. I've got nothing to do with any of that. He got some pit in him. He so. Got, right, so go over there and, get, and then the tiger eat your asshole out, baby. That's just how that, <laughs> like, that's just, that's just what's going to happen. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So I'm just very stressed out because. I love a well played <laughs> cat joke. I yeah, love a good Cat Williams joke. But no, um, that's just very stressful to me. I'm very tired of being an adult. I oh, should, shit, that's the tiger. The tiger, <laughs> the only <laughs> <thing> <laughs> <in> the <laughs> Now 
got to watch it. Now I got to watch it. That's one of my favorite specials. But no, um, I'm just tired of being an adult. I just, yeah. that should, the ceiling falling down, I'm, I'm just a girl. That's not my business. Like, I, I shouldn't have anything to do with that. And I really don't want the people in my apartment today because, like, I threw a sleepover for one of my friends last night. It was really great. There were snacks everywhere. There's tequila everywhere. You call my phone. I didn't know what was on my phone. Were you going to fuck me? Was it everybody was fucking out? You said sleepover. I said for one of my friends. Okay, so listen. I was talking to my cousin about That's how. That's not a sleepover. It is a sleepover. <laughs> I'm going to explain it to you. So this person, I do, I do sex too. Um, and I was talking to my cousin the other day and we were talking about how boys don't get to have girl sleepover experiences. Like they spend a night at their cousin's house. They hang out. They get one but, flat pillow. Yeah, but they don't like, it ain't no skincare, ain't no hair, ain't no nails. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like thoughtful. So like, you know, I put like a palette out. It was really cute. I put like tea light candles on it. I bought all his favorite childhood snacks and I bought champagne and you know, it was just like a whole shenanigan. It was a really good time. Um, and I put little, I put activities in a bowl. So I put like two of his favorite movies, two of my favorite movies. I put sex on there, lazy sex. So one coupon for lazy sex, one coupon for not lazy sex, smoke break. Uh, I put a couple like shot like ones in there. So we like have to stop and take a shot. And it was like a really good night. But, like, it looks like a sex party happened in there. Yeah. Like, the tripod's still up. Huh. So, I don't want the people in my apartment. What? A sin happening over there. Oh, yeah. Thank Hello, you. Christ. <laughs> I'm about to sin again. <laughs> <laughs> I have a funny story about ceilings caving in. And it, it, honestly, it's not funny. Mm. But one of the craziest nights that we had in Tallahassee is when the ceiling caved in at a house par- or a party. Mm-hmm. In Seminole Grand was like one of the more notorious apartment complexes in Tallahassee, but the ceiling caved in. Like, mm. the whole, like they were on the second floor and they all fell down. Mm. People like broke their neck and shit. It was crazy. Jesus Christ! But because we were terrible people and it was 2012 and nobody had any kind of self awareness or gave a fuck about anything, people created a trending topic. Remember, that's when people would like do trending topics mm-hmm. like an activity, mm-hmm. and it was the Seminole Grand playlist, and people would put like. To the floor. We fall down. <laughs> like that was like the twi- and it was so terrible and so funny. And then yeah, that happened. And there was another event that was we had a house party and the floor caved in as well. Mm. The floor just caved in Tallahassee. I don't know if it was like different kind of gravity or just too many niggas mm. doing stuff. But I mean, apartments. I think also like post maybe like. 2006 are made out of glass bones and paper skin. Like, they're not putting these apartments together well. And I don't think they ever consider that you might have a gang of motherfuckers inside of an apartment because that's not what they made for. So they don't make the floor to withstand a Negroid house party. They don't. They Like, they, they, so. And if they die, they die. That's kind of like part of the plan, too. So Mm -hmm. they they purposely cut corners. Yeah. Um, Okay, so booty hole. Booty hole. Booty hole game. My coochie ping. My so in, in you have to go on a road trip. Mm-hmm. Where are we going? How long is the trip? Okay, you got to go on a two Wong Fu cross country road trip. You driving from New York to LA. Are we going in this? Are you here also, or is it just me and some other just motherfuckers? You. So it okay, has to, three other celebrities. You may drive, or you can pick another celebrity to drive. We need somebody over snacks and somebody over music. <laughs> Do I have any other dominion over their behaviors? Like, can I tell people, like, shut the fuck up? Like, you can come, but you can't talk. Like, But if you, I mean, why even, if you got to do all that, why invite them? Well, no. I, I've been deeping, <laughs> my new British slang from listening to Shits and Gig, I've been deeping sure. uh, this future conversation that we've been having, especially since he's been showing his ass about Sierra. Yeah, we're going to post that clip. Right? I would love to have control over a situation where I could force him to treat women with respect. Just for, like, a weekend. <laughs> You we're gonna, gonna like what, finish you're school, gonna be in school. a fucking you're gonna be in a goddamn respect <laughs> women boot camp you fucking freak like if I could just get my hands on him for three or four days at a time like shock therapy just like you you drive this car you pump the gas you carry the bags you buy the be food fucking be nice. fucking normal yeah also it's like I think future one of them people for me because I am a slut that I look at him and I'm like I could save him I and mean, you can't because he's cannot. disgusting it's too deep. but he's hot so you look at him and you like. So you want future to be driving, don't you? I, I want him to be driving, but I want him to do what I say. I, I want you, you're, this weekend, you're going to learn how to treat women nice. You're going to FaceTime Russell. You're going to apologize. You're going to say sorry. And you're going to say and sorry gonna, to Sierra, too. And you're going to post an a, a iOS apology and a video. Your Honor, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I want I want you. you going to apologize to them people. You're going to make an apology mixtape. And you sign over all your rights as a, a father. 
He don't want that baby. He don't. He don't. Um, this is completely um, off topic, but I do like the same way you want to like kidnap future for a weekend. I want to do like a summer camp program to rescue all the daughters of hashtag girl dads. <sighs> try to like undo all the programming that they terrible ass daddies be doing because it's just like all the worst niggas you ever seen. Our girl, girl dad. dad. And then they, they kind of, I'm a girl dad. I'm going to get you out of this. And then it takes so long to be deprogrammed of those I'm things. I'm just now finishing up. Jesus Christ. And my dad wasn't like a terrible T.I. type. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Awful massage. It wasn't like a violent kind of misogyny. But like my dad was one of the 50s. Bro. But it's it was, still misogyny. It was some, it was some mm-hmm. Frank Mitchell going on in there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm just now. <laughs> Unlearning. Yeah. <laughs> like we all got, I, I get it. But we got to do something. Different. I think I just recognized that my dad didn't have a good sense at an early age, so it made me really stop listening to him. Like, after a while, I'm like, oh, no, you're kind of... Why would I listen to you? Why would I you? listen to you? <laughs> um, so, I don't know. None of that shit really ever... I don't know how that happened. Disdain, probably, spite. But whatever. So, Future's going to drive, and he's going to go to Respect Women Boot Camp. Um, I would also have Regina Hall in my car. Ooh, that's good she seems like a really fun time. I feel really like time. there's a lot to learn from her professionally and personally. Um, and then also, I think she would be a good time in the car with Tracy Ellis Ross. Mm. Because... That was similar. Setup. Yeah, I like the way she dresses. I'm sure we could do some shopping along the way on the trip. She's just so fancy and fabulous. I feel like everything that I think is fancy and fabulous, she could upgrade it. Mm-hmm. Like anything that I'm like, okay, yes, I've picked this hotel. It's so fancy. She's gonna be like, actually, my mom has a villa here, so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop there. Mm-hmm. If that's okay with that's everyone else, good. yeah. So that's my trip. I like that. So for mm-hmm. me, the person who is driving is John Boyega, because men should drive, and he's getting fucked. So there's that. I think you could actually hunch him. We talked about this. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that that man is coming. Mm. Hey, yo, but I'm I had a delayed processing, <laughs> but yes, but I'm tis. But yeah, John Boyega is coming. So that's the only man. Hold on, Dexter, can you have me my fan out my purse, please? Men should be driving. Men should be doing it. It's in their service somewhere. to women. Mm-hmm. And then Jennifer Lewis. Oh my God! I want to. Jennifer Lewis is, is this fucking, a caravan? Can we just follow each other? It's like a. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thank you. We have you. two suburbans that are coming. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Lewis and Tisha Campbell. Tisha Campbell, I feel like I would get nothing done around her. She's such a silly person. I'm gonna have me. I love Tisha Campbell and Jim, we gonna be laughing. Imagine at Tisha and, Campbell and Regina Hall hanging out. Good time. That seems like a good time. You know what I want to know? What? And this is messy. But I want to know who don't fuck with each other that we didn't know don't fuck with each other in, like, Black Hollywood. I would really love that. Did you see that video? I sent you that video of uh, Tisha and Dwayne's wedding. Oh, and, like, yeah. everybody that was at the wedding. I, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall uh, I there. mean, everybody here, or even, um, what's auntie name? Shirley Ralph's wedding. Oh, These yes. your bridesmaids. How all y'all meet each other? How do, I mean, what? I, I mean, yeah, yeah, obviously. But, like, damn. But I want to know who specifically. Like, you know when, um, when Red Table Talk first came out, and Jada did that video with Gabrielle Union saying how they did not fuck with each other at all. I'm mm. like, I didn't even know y'all was beefing like that. What were they beefing about? Probably Will. Gabrielle Union dated Will Smith? She, remember Bad Boys 2, they were love interests? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah. sure there was some kind of weird. But, like, all the bitches who Will start with on screen got really weird about Will. Because Fancy was being weird with Will because mm. she was in Wild Wild West. Um, I think Will everybody. might be, a, like, a very... I didn't, we don't know him, obviously. Uh, but, like, he seems like quite a charming person. And he also seems like he's down to fucking clown. Like, it, it just, I can't imagine. Because I've been at work with, like, certain type of niggas sometimes. And I know, like, it's somebody somewhere that don't play about you. But the way that you at this workplace trying to romance me and like on me and all these compliments and charmers and you bring me snacks. And I know he's that nigga at work. I yes. know he's the, I was just thinking about you. I got this off the craft services table for you. I know that's that nigga probably. And that's that's why when all this shit happened, Jada's a slut and Jada don't respect, bro. Ain't no telling what Jada done been through with this man. And not because Jada do her big one as well. Mm-hmm. But it's a big, like, big one. she's yeah. done, she done, she did it. Even if you and look. And they have their own agreement. Mm-hmm. Even if you look at how Will, when he takes pictures with co-stars or like when he does like press runs and shit. Margot Robbie. Every time you see... Every time you see Margot Robbie, she got both arms wrapped around Will Smith, squeezing that nigga like, like she ain't never seen him before. He put her shrimp on the Barbie, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Good day, mate. And I'm, oh, I'm trying to do a buddy comedy with Will Smith. When That's I, the first nigga I said. That's a man. When I, I get famous, two. this I've already done it as a civilian. When I get famous, civilian. 
I'm fucking who I want to fuck. I'm sorry. I'm going to have no qualms about it. I already don't care what people say about me now. I've heard some of the rumors about myself as a normal. They're egregious. It can't get no worse than what I already have about myself. Honestly. Now, I'm screwing whoever I want to when I get famous. I don't care if I'm 50 when I get famous. It's happening. I'm going to have me a grand old time. Me and this coochie, coochie takes Hollywood. That's what's going to happen. And I got happen. the resources now? Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh, 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 ooh oh, this is a little, a little yeasty boop. <laughs> little flat Ooh. And I can have and I can have a baby. Let me fuck the right famous person I can take care I'm of that baby. Okay. Pregnancy don't stop nothing but a period. Oh, Shit. that's another part of my joke of the week. My period symptoms were so bad. Oh, uh, dang. I should I be my next one? My tooth? Because remember my tooth fell out? Girl, and you thought, said that shit. I was like, oh, It no. wasn't my tooth. It, it was your, I it know. It was my feeling. So that I got that update. I was like, whoo, Jesus. It was a quick fix. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, okay, my teeth falling out. I'm tired. My titties hurt. I'm pregnant. Mm. Clearly I'm pregnant. So I rush into the store to get pregnancy tests. I know she was like, bitch, you all right? No. Mm-hmm. I was not pregnant. At this age, though, it's I still feel like a teenager about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know it would be perfectly acceptable, and literally nobody would have anything to say if I were to get pregnant, except for like I don't know. Finally, but like, I'm still like when people tell me they're pregnant, I'm like, you're a child. Who's gonna keep? Who's gonna keep this fucking baby? Are you, baby? Are you gonna be okay? But no, it's like you're you're we're thirty. Grown yeah, we're going to sale. Um. So speaking mm. of. Oh, we got letters, bitch. We, we just got a baby, letter. We have letters. We got okay, letters. So I'll read the Close some of these apps, man. Are you well? Are you okay? No, I've never been well. Okay. okay. We just got a letter. Okay. So it's you just got a letter. Yay. Praise for the pussy sandwich episode. Yay. Ladies, I must write you to let you know how right on you are regarding the conversation you had during the pussy sandwich episode. Allow me to explain. First, if you, choose, if you should choose to honor me by even mentioning this letter during a future episode, I must ask that you please do not use my name. Just call me Leah. Hey, Leah girl. Hey, Leah girl. Also, forgive me for sending this in larger text. I am an old, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's fine. An old. And I am of poor eyesight. Okay, yeah. This is fine. It, it shows up regular on our side. Mm-hmm. Okay. The entire episode was deeply, deeply triggering and simultaneously the gospel. Baby, you opened up word for this email. Mm-hmm. May every woman out here hear you when you describe the trouble that a man can bring to our lives. I acknowledge that there can be so much joy in weddings, babies, and other fairy tales. I had this joy once. Then I realized that I married a psychopath. Damn. You cannot predict when they will take off their mask and show you who, re- who they really are. Listen to the gem left to us by our sister Maya Angelou. When people show you who they are, believe them. Oh, shit. You can say Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, fuck. You did us some writing. You I'll want, start the next part. I said, let's, let's pop yeah. on this. Okay. okay. Where do we stop at? The mental, verbal, and emotional abuse began soon after my wedding. I mean, honeymoon. Uh, the trauma I endured for 10 years left me with complex PTSD and triggered multiple autoimmune diseases in my body. Now I'm disabled. I'll be in pain for the rest of my life because of his bullshit, and I can't stress enough how important it is to get a safety plan in place as soon as you notice the red flags. It does not get better. Now that I'm a proud divorcee, I can once again live my life in peace and privacy. I rather enjoy laying in my bed, playing my Nintendo Switch at night, rubbing my feet together with no one to give me a hard time because I would rather do my own thing. Side note, I swear when Mel said this, I verbally responded, I knew we were friends. Yeah, once the feet gets rubbed together, get off me. <laughs> it's a fajita. It's, it's a, a fajita. Oh, it's a fajita. It's a cute. You see that? You know that joke? No, you fucked me up because I was like, I was thinking of burrito. Whatever, go ahead, I'm sorry. I think that's like also another layer of waffle because it's mm-hmm. not really a rapid feed, mm-hmm. which is funny. Right. Okay, sorry. No one to give me the silent treatment because I am tired and don't want to be used as a sex doll. No one to curse me out royally because I asked very nicely if he can clear up after himself. There's a terror in learning that you have made the biggest mistake of your life, Jesus. And now you have to fight for your life to escape it. Men can get real murdery when you threaten to leave, especially if you have a child together. Be aware that this step can be very expensive. My divorce lawyer costs four times what I spent on the wedding, and I will not go through that again. And then there are we pause expenses. right there? Divorce should not be that crazy. I should be able to leave a nigga where I found him at. Like, it just, I don't know what. And I go- think that's on purpose, I, we, so we can't leave. Yeah, I, I hate that. Um, Set up your life so that you can. Oh, you're doing two paragraphs in one. Oh, I can go. Go ahead. Set up your life so that you can go home and do exactly as you please. Get that duplex, girl. If you must keep a lover or potential spouse nearby, have your own space. Side note, Tally, I literally cheered when you said this. Thank you. If finances dictate that you cannot live apart, at the very least, have a separate bedroom for yourself. Never surrender your own bank account and won't. Ever. Just know. Explain yourself to no one. I swear explaining yourself every step to someone will annoy you till you die. 
I respect and have been living your motto. I do not want a man in my house. Weaponized Her. incompetence is real, and it is a poison that will infiltrate your home. Do not let it in. If a man washes your baby's bottle so poorly that you think it is better to never ask him to do it again, you know he needs his ass whooped. Listening to this episode made my knees shake, my stomach hurt, and gave me goosebumps, but most importantly, it helped me find the courage to speak out. I would never have shared the details of my trauma before now, but it felt important to let others know the truth. I just want to hug every woman who is trying to survive the trash that <laughs> the evil ones bury us under. I also want to give you to a virtual hug. Thank you for exposing the reality of living with another person. You simply cannot always predict when you will come across that man that wakes up and chooses violence, and they will hide it for, from you until you are in too deep. I want every person to know that you don't have to live like that. Choose happiness. The road to get there is hard, but it's so worth it. But Blessings to all my sisters, Leah. Uh, oh, and she asked that we sing the We Just Got a Letter song, and we did. We did. So, yeah. No, Ooh, but um, that ties into the topic. No, that makes me like, so sad. Damn. But also the impact that we have, even if it's the 3,000 people that we just trying to get to 10, you mm-hmm. know, but it's like, we out here really impacting people, and that's crazy. And this is, this is one of, this is, you know, whenever I speak to women who are older than me, you know, and they say things like this, it, it really makes me emotional because I'm literally just figuring it the fuck out. Yeah. I say all the time, I am just a girl. I'm just figuring things out, and I just have very firm opinions about things. But, like, I'm so blessed to know that somebody is listening and finding value of what we're saying. And yes. that's I, that, somebody, I feel so honored. Like and you're um, trying to change the world, man, yeah. a little bit at a time. That's yes, beautiful. that Thank was beautiful. You Thank so you much, so Leah. much. Ooh, shit. Bitch, I'm going to cry. Yeah, I'm trying to get myself together. That Ooh. was... That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's just so terrifying to think that you will love somebody so much to live with them and then they just end up being a complete. Because I've seen it happen like in my own life, not in my own life to me, but like to people that, you know, family and friends and things like that. It's, I don't know. It's just so terrifying. Yeah. I just, you just never know. You really just <sighs> never know. Okay. So we have one. This seems fun and messy and it has attachments, but this was an update to one we read in March. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. This I didn't read. Well, I've mm-hmm. never seen this in my life. No, the first one. Remember, she talked about her job and the nigga and the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she gave us an update. So you want to just tag this for next? Let's do that one for next episode. Next, okay, mm-hmm. so we can do this messy one here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Let me the, read it. The, the subject is Kaya said don't trust no nigga. Okay. Uh, I'll go. So, dear Mel and Tally, first, I got to hype y'all up because I love the podcast. Every time I see a new video posted, it boosts my mood. Oh, my God, thanks. Y'all are like the big sisters I never had. Literally a perfect balance of comedy and social awareness. How they be doing it? They be doing it like a gang sign? Here you go. Love you. Uh, I need some advice. I've known this guy for about 10 years now and have always had a crush on him. We met when we were around 15 or 16 at Driver's Ed through his cousin and my best friend. Those two continued an on-again, off-again relationship situationship up until a year or two after high school, so me and him would see each other here and there. We did a little foreplay once in high school, but nothing came of it. Fast forward to now, he lives in another state, but we FaceTime every day. I feel like he's becoming my best friend. He claims to really like me now, but I'm reluctant. Not only did he overlook look me all these years for all these years but last year when we first reconnected he basically stood me up he came back to Florida to visit and said he wanted to take me out that weekend and it was radio silence the day of a couple of months after that he reached back out and apologized I hesitantly accepted it but since then he's been more attentive he has sent me money for my birthday and to pay bills even offered to fly me out but my school schedule makes it difficult so now he's coming to He's planning to come visit for a couple of weeks again, but this time wants to spend a weekend with me at Disney. Has even had me look up hotels. I like him, but I don't want to get hurt. Am I a stupid hoe if I put my trust in a nigga? I attached a picture of him and me. That was the best picture I could find of him. Watch it be Brennan. It's not all these things. Um, Thanks in advance for the advice. Also, his birthday is coming up. Should I get him a gift? Okay. I feel like I've seen you before. Cute. Yeah. You hush. You hush hush your hush <laughs> you down. Shut, you my, shut your yeah, mouth. Now. That's cute. Mm-hmm. A, little, a little bit like Jodeci. Not in a bad way, but you know how dogs seem like people, people look like dogs. <laughs> I didn't mean that negatively at all. Like, he just... Please. No, I'm being serious, because I know some things sound like I'm trying to be funny. I'm not trying I, to be funny. Yeah, but he looks like... Yeah. I mean, he looks like a person, and he's handsome, no, but no, you no, get the yeah, point. No, no, I get it. Okay, I get it. fine. If Jodeci was a person, yeah, it, they would look alike. Okay, fair. That's... Um, okay. Thank okay, you, please. So, here's the thing. I think you got a bitch. They all, that's always going to be answered. They always got a bitch. They all, I mean, yeah, it's I always a, a phantom bitch somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, you have to be cognizant of that. But, if he's spending money. Take it. Take it. Take it. If he can um, take it to Disney World, go. But also, like, I don't know how young you are. Let somebody know that you're going. 
Yeah. If you can get a picture of his license or some shit to send to well, somebody. Well, your best friend or his cousin or whatever. Need, need to know. Kind like, of you need to. Of, that he won't. Right. Murder, murder you. you. Yeah. But. Um, and also, it's a huge red flag that he offered to do something for you and then disappeared. Even if he came back and apologized. That's the part that made me feel like he had a bitch. Because usually when niggas make plans with you and then they ghost you on the day of the plans. Yeah. That's weird. And the niggas be like, oh, oh I um, had gas nah, that day. So I just like, nah, no, nigga, nigga you, you just said I have gas and I can't come see. So no, niggas do weird shit niggas, like that. So I do yeah. not like that. I don't he like He probably that. does have a bitch, but you got to let, like, when it comes to niggas, and, like, for, even on his birthday, like, if his birthday coming up, is your birthday first? Like, I don't, I wouldn't yeah. it unless you see him actually do something. Like, mm-hmm. put his money where his mouth and is. My thing is, and I saw the a video on TikTok, and I agree, relationships with men only work if the man likes you or loves you more than you like or love him, or y'all love each other equally. If right. you feel like you like him or you digging him more than he like and or he digging you, shit. you need to let that shit go. Even if he is yeah. doing nice stuff for you, because it just simply does not pan out in our favor when it works that way. Yeah, it so. Does. It don't, but you have to be smart. And if he come and he does say what he gonna do about X, Y, Z, then you can go to Disney World because like, you can't just be being out of town with a nigga that you hate or that hates you. Is not great. It's not great. It's the worst. And it's it's gonna get very much you on the news next. Yeah. So you, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. But if, if you want to go, Disney's but a fun time. Disney's fun. I'm gonna take these bagels money, off. Let him. Noise. If he yeah. gonna spend that money, let him. But he got to actually spend it. He yeah. can't tell you he gonna spend it and yeah. then not do it. He got to do it. He lives in another state, but we FaceTime every day. Uh, send us an update. Are y'all? Are you FaceTiming, like, just the same time every day, like, in the morning? Is it, like, you can FaceTime him whenever you want? Is it, like, a once-a-day type right, thing? Because, have, like, because like, what's the deal? Because if he don't ever, like, FaceTime you, like, at night, you know what I'm saying? He always FaceTiming you from the same blurred corner of his home office. Yeah, then you got to be. It's weird. Yeah. He, he yeah. probably got a bitch. I don't know. He probably got a bitch. I just, you know, as somebody who ain't never bitchless, I just always assume <laughs> that everybody got a everybody bitch. Got a bitch. <laughs> everybody got a bitch. It's somebody. Because I'm never without one. I always assume that somebody, unless they look like they bite bricks, somebody don't play about you somewhere. And little, them lips. Yeah, nah, nah, he got a bitch. With these braids? Are these and then also, oh, these lots of braids. What's Listen. this in the, and then also in this picture, look like bitch decorations in the background. Either he at his mama house, or, or it's a bitch. It's a bitch. This picture on the wall right here that I'm looking at, because I'm assuming that look like a perfume bottle, like a, like, yeah, a, like a little live, laugh, love. Live, lotion. laugh, love. It, it, yep. This is a, this is a, a bathroom that a woman has decorated. And I'm not even trying to be funny or overdramatic. And look at that. And that shower curtain. Is that a shower curtain? That's yeah. not a, that's not a man's shower home. shower rod. Cause that's not a. gonna get that regular rod. Yeah, nigga's gonna get that plastic rod. he may rod. have been in his mama house. I'm just saying. But if not, cause I don't, it's old woman decor. I don't know who house he at. But it's a bitch house. It's a bitch house. And now the bitch might be his mama. But that house belongs to a woman. That bathroom belongs to a woman. So. We're crazy. Fair. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> no argument there. But you got to You asked us, and we, and we told you. you. Yeah, but go on to get you a little Disney now. Short term, go put get your you ears some, on. Get you some ears and get your name embroidered on the back. Mm-hmm. And when you go take pictures, when you go out of town with niggas that you're not sure about, take a picture by yourself. Take pictures by yourself so you still have memories of the good time that you had. Take when pictures. You got to delete them pictures, right? Begrudgingly, you ain't losing all your. You ain't memories. losing all your memories. You can still say like, you oh, went. I want one by myself. Yep. Period. That's it's the key. Just, I see you. We see each other. We see each other. Okay, is that it for letters for that's now? That's it for the letters. Okay. So cool, let's cool, get cool, into cool. the sermon. I'm hot as fuck. I'm always hot in here. So, um, literally the day we recorded last time is mm-hmm. when all the shit broke loose mm-hmm. on social. And um, and then since then, there have been several more instances of the same thing. Mm-hmm. Of men who have powerful, talented, amazing women mm-hmm. and don't know how to handle it. And it is just the most disheartening thing as a powerful, Mm -hmm. bright light having woman Mm -hmm. dealing with these niggas who can't take it. And it it, and just seeing so many of of celebrity women that I love and I admire. Mm -hmm. And it's just so unfortunate. I think we need to start calling things what they are. Not that first of all, and this is gonna sound way out of character for me, men are human beings and they do make mistakes and they do have I'm well, I'm okay. And they do take emotional missteps like everyone else. However, a lot of the things that we are seeing with these women, 
it's not they don't know how to handle it. They are intentionally trying to humble and harm these women. And that publicly. it publicly. And that is what I can't get behind. Some things are just a mistake or I didn't handle it well or I didn't know how to X, Y, Z. That's fine. This shit that we finna talk about now, all these instances that we finna talk about now are men waiting until something wonderful is happening to a woman to be like, I'm finna show my ass because I don't feel big anymore or I don't feel the most important in this person's life. It happens in famous people's lives. It happens in in civilian life. You, um, get, you can move up from fries to doing a cash register and it's going to be a nigga. It's going like, to be a problem. How dare this bitch right. be on the register? So and I don't know. Don't. I think we need to start naming and shaming that a lot of these things are not mistakes. I've been doing that with everybody, I would say, for like the past like three or four years, like being more intentional about calling something violence what it is. This is violent. This, and, and I just, the shit with Kiki really like. That shit. Pissed me off because, yeah. first of all, I want us to take a step back. I don't know Kiki. I don't know them. And, you know, I have a habit of just saying whatever the fuck I want to say, not counting into the fact that one day I might be around these people. One day I might work with these people. But I'm sure my opinion is going to say the same and I would say it to their face. I feel like people know they niggas. You know some of these things about this person. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if they got awful takes or they a little misogynistic, a little homophobic, whatever the fuck, some of these things you know. It didn't come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, right when... This shenanigan happened. You know these things about this person. But in the same breath, for you to know these things and accept this person for whoever they may be, and for them to still get in front of people, and you let poor people attack me? You let poor people disparage me on the Talk internet? Are, and I love you for who you are? And I think that's the... the I'm violent, Kiki violent. motherfucking Palmer, and I love I, you. And I love you. Out of everybody. I'm Kiki Keep a Check Palmer. Yo, baby. I had your baby. And you gonna do me like this. And the best people know you for is being Dro's brother. That's really the only reason I met you. And you let poor internet you people let attack me. call me all kinds of sluts and whores and sluts single mothers and whores. now. I saw a tweet. It, and uh, Usher don't want none of these people y'all talking about. He don't want Kiki. He don't want goddamn Saweetie. Usher like his bitches with AARP cards like and church hoes. hats. He we likes all, all hoes. Usher like all hoes. Y'all don't know because y'all young. Y'all, y'all don't know y'all shit. Wanna, Usher like, I remember the, the day him and Tamika started dating. Me and my sisters were like, <gasps> because he got mommy issues. He know this nigga like all bitches. Usher want a bitch to shop at Ann Taylor Loft. And where she knows. It, it's, he it's don't want no diamonds. damn Kiki Palmer. He want a bitch in white diamonds. He don't he want, want Kiki What's that old lady Chanel perfume that smells like the inside of a cabinet when you Is open that it? Five? That's what. No, the number, no, not the. not the. You're a silly bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he want a bitch with a perfume with the balloon on the end of the bottle. He, he don't want, want no fucking. He want a bitch with a red circular sponge in their purse. He want a bitch with round nails. Not oval, <laughs> not almond. He want a bitch with and round red, red nails. And red. Any nigga that suggests you get red nails wants to fuck his mom. Please do not date him. I just want to say that now. I want a bitch with a balled up napkin in her hand at all times. Okay? <laughs> he want a bitch that keep a couple of these. One in the car. One in her bag. <laughs> he want a, want a bitch who like butter pecan ice cream. He want a bitch with a seat at church. Like, that's just her seat. Her like, seat nothing, niggas know not to sit there. <laughs> I just want a bitch with a strawberry candy on the bottom of the purse. He want a bitch that put a prayer cloth on the bitch you talking about. He, he want a bitch that put a prayer cloth. want a bitch with a standing hair appointment every week. Usher bitches would have put a prayer cloth on Kiki at that concert. Covered it. Oh. <laughs> Usher don't want none of these young hoes. He don't want none of these Oh, that was funny. Usher want a bitch with titties. You got to fold in half. You that don't even sit in the bra good. You don't stop. <laughs> high five me. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> you got to fold it to put it in the bra. That's Usher want, want a bitch to say, Lord have mercy when she sit down. Usher want a bitch to say, Lord have mercy when she ride dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Usher want. <laughs> Usher want a bitch with a slip on. Dude, we're going to put that clip on Twitter. And we are going <laughs> to. <laughs> Usher at work. Uh, Usher is at work. And it's Usher. Let me tell you something. And I was having this conversation with uh, one of my little yes. 
about like behavior and situations with famous people and at concerts. And Meg Thee Stallion was brought up. I wish the fuck I would. One of my bitches would get invited to do anything physical with Meg Thee Stallion and, and, and turn it down it. because of me. Because first of all, was I there? Why did she pick you and over me? me? Hold on, I got sneeze. <sighs> Don't embarrass me. <laughs> okay, there it is. Look. But no, if you got invited on stage with Megan Thee Stallion and you sitting up there like you saved and shit, me and you broke up. It's your motherfucking ass on You not stage. the hoe I thought you was. I wifed a slut, and that's what I want to see. I don't, don't act pious because of me. Don't put your chastity belt on because of me. If I was, I would have kissed Usher on that neck. So, oh, Kiki better than me. Usher, and don't let me be drunk. Don't, I will kiss. I had to put the middle part of my tongue on Usher's <laughs> neck at that damn I'd be concert. Like, all right, bitch. I, okay. All right. All right. Beyonce, okay, okay. girl. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right now. We would have turned no. that Park MGM to fucking Magic baby, City. Baby, baby. But no, I think that sometimes, yeah. I think in situations too, I've always said that men think that they're the prize because their mothers have told them that you're mommy's special boy and you're so smart, you're so sweet, you're so charming, you're, you're all so of these things. I'm Beyonce always. And I think that sometimes it will click for men. They'll see certain things happening to you or certain situations where it's like, no, she's really that. She's her. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not who I thought I was. She, she, yes. I dated a guy, and I use that very loosely because it was undergrad. So dated means like I spent the night with your house twice. Huh? Do I know her? No. Oh, okay, girl. This is. is You may have. You may have told me. This way before your time. But I remember dating him, and it was around the time of, like, campaign week and, like, AKA. So both were happening. Those are my mm-hmm. priorities. I, I need to be on this court, and I need to be on this line. Mm-hmm. So those my you are not my priority, not in a, in a nasty way. But, but you're like, just not. you just not. I'm mm-hmm. having a good time. You're fun. You're a sweet boy. But and I'll that see you for sex. He was mommy special's boy. Ugh. This is before I was having sex. But you can tell, like, his mommy, like, you are the perfect pussy. Sweet angel baby. And I was too busy to engage with him on Valentine's Day because it's campaign week, bitch. Like, mm-hmm. it's, I'm out. It's Me and Super my Bowl. It's go time. my basket are on the, but I didn't have time to, like, meet with him for Valentine's Day. And I, when I tell you, I've not gotten that gift to this day. And you won't. That nigga did not give me my motherfucking gift because I, I was just like, hey, I got to do this. I got to go to the best walk. I got to go. Like, I, but, like, oh, you thought you were the star sticker. Well, I have a theory about okay. men who date there are two types of men who date bad bitches. Yes. You have the niggas that we're talking about, and I'm going to get to that theory in a second. But the ideal man who dates bad bitches, they date bad bitches because not only do they like the attention that bad bitches bring to them, but they genuinely enjoy a hot bitch. The fact that you can dress like a slut and, oh, and look it. amazing, your fucking wigs, your nails, you're funny, you drink like a nigga, whatever it is, you got a big job, whatever the fuck is going on that makes you a bad bitch. I love that about you, and it makes me feel better as a man, and I feel like you are empowering me with being who you are. Those are the type of niggas that date bad bitches that I really enjoy. On the other hand, you have niggas who date bad bitches because they think bad bitches are being bad bitches to get men. So mm-hmm. they feel like once you have a man... You're trying to find a new nigga to be a bad bitch for. It's like, no, this is who I am. That's who I am, but also they feel like once you have a man, you can hang all that bad bitch shit up. Go in there and get your smock. <laughs> Go in there and get your smock. And, and shut up. And shut up. Here's your orientation book. This is the kitchen. And this is the laundry room. We're done now. You're, working. You're you at work. And it's like, no. no that, and no. I think that that's what some of these men, especially ones that are attached to famous women, they're like, okay, all of this hot bitch shit, the titties, the ass, the scandalous that was so clothing. Cute for you. It's time to be a mom. It's time and to wife. be a mom and wife now. And it's like, no. 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 I, don't, I don't fucking think so. I mean, I think that that's what happened. First of all, Kiki has had something astounding happened to her post-pregnancy yeah i have never seen anything like it she immediately became this more effervescent gorgeous it's like her glowy, spirit she lifted looks so she looks so much better but kiki before and i i think she was wonderful i think she's gorgeous all these things didn't seem to have the same confidence before all she of this happened more, but she, she got yeah. even more got vibrant more and, 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 and ass and, and we've always loved kicking her big personality but it's like it just got even she bigger. settled into it in a way that we haven't seen so what i think happened is that he thought and a lot of men think that when you have a baby you're gonna get all slumpy and frumpy and you're gonna Perfect. have postpartum and you're gonna be bigger and you're gonna be all these things marks, that they yeah. think they're gonna keep you in the house they think your self-esteem is gonna be lower all these things so i think he thought kiki was gonna be going from who she was to 
a lesser version of that. He did not expect for her star to rise even further than it already had, had you, done. I interviewed the president two weeks ago, and you going to show your ass like this? Fuck you. The president, vice president. You, but you know what I mean. Same thing. I think they got Joe Biden in that White House in a people suit. And I really think it's Kamala doing all the stuff. I think they just unzip his human suit <laughs> when he go back to the White House. I, I don't know. I think they got his brain in a clone. <laughs> they got it like on Futurama. <laughs> like, the I don't know. He be glitching and shit, man. And I'm not supposed to say glitching. that, but he be glitching and shit, Shut bro. Up, go ahead. I'm just saying. But anyway, so I just, I, I think that in situations like that, and it was incredibly violent the way that he did it. Oh, it's the outfit, though. Your mom. Also, what I think possibly happened, because I've had shit like that happen to me on social media. What I think happened is she probably was not picking up that man's phone calls. She probably was ignoring him having her night out and he's like oh since you're gonna do that i'm gonna do this and that was his big joke like the baby done shit up his back and you gotta <laughs> clean it up and here this bitch is with usher looking you know the fuck what i'm about to do and it was like at first when he said you a mom like it was like oh he's joking because it might have been inside joke right it was like mm-hmm. probably insider like that's probably like they joke so i, was, I didn't think nothing of it and he followed up and i'm just like he oh, doubled down on that ass. shit and then then now everybody's searching your tweets we found out you a little bit of a black neo-nazi you know what i'm saying <laughs> you like we you can't have, and it, it just it was so disheartened for me because like i'm dealing with my own shit right now and just you know because once you my man my man my man like perfect. my man my man my man is the same thing as saying this edible ain't shit. Edible ain't shit yes i saw it's that the same thing like it's because I've been there, and it's just like, why can't we just win? It's like you, you, you enjoy these men, and you having a, the best time, and they find that little window of space to show their ass, and it's just like. Well, also, I feel like you can't tell, and this is gonna sound disgusting and super toxic, whatever. You really have to be judicious about what you tell men about how you feel about them, because once they feel like they fucking got you, once and, they know you love them, and they know you feel like it's not worth it to go try to find somebody else. Once they know that, they are very, you know, they they know where that fence is, and they're gonna act up just enough to where like I know I'm not getting put out. I'm not getting left. Shit might just be rocking for a while, and her friends might hate me. I think that's... I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I think that's where niggas be at sometimes. And when so they like, get that cockiness and arrogance to them, and they see a little glimpse of, she might go fuck somebody. She mm-hmm. might cook it. Mm-hmm. That's when the spiral comes. Mm-hmm. That's when that spiral comes. Because it's like, as a, as a hot bitch... Go to an Usher concert. Now, granted, do I want Usher? Duh, who don't? Right. But, like, Usher don't want me. And stop talking about whether that man, I'm so sick of y'all with this shit. Y'all did it to Usher. Y'all doing it to Keith Lee. Stop talking about these people in the damn herpes, okay? Leave them alone. Oh, my God. If they got the herpes, so what? It's pussy acne. Let's move on, okay? (laughs) Let, I'm just saying, (laughs) leave these people alone. You do not know them. That's so nasty to do to people. I just. I don't read or get tested enough to talk the way that y'all talk about STDs. And, like, herpes don't even work how y'all think herpes work because y'all don't read. And then the saddest part about it all, it's like, Usher don't do nothing to nobody. Niggas it's simply really hate not. Usher because bitches like him. So y'all are being like mean to this. Hate. Y'all being mean to this, man. That's all I saw when people were talking about Kiki Palmer. Like, oh, she did all that for a nigga with bumps on his dick. And it's like, you niggas are such hateful bitches, man. I'm so fucking hateful. Ugh. And also with that, even with the incels, and I was like, how you gonna go to an Usher concert and not want to get sang to the Usher concert? And somebody's like, well, good luck getting herpes. It's like, uh, what's wrong with y'all niggas? Like, what? Bitches can't like R and B. I mean, like, like, damn. I mean, shit. Uh, Ugh, niggas is weird. And then we have DDG. I hate that little bitch. I hate, I hate when I say I and, hate and, that bitch. And when we said months ago, like, he's doing this shit on purpose. Shut y'all bitter asses up, you old oh, auntie ass bitches. And yep. he said in his own words, he was doing that shit on purpose. That shit shook me. But you got to let, I mean, of course we don't know this girl, and this is all very parasocial. But you got to let you gotta let, let her do that. Like, she, you gotta let her, yeah. it's nothing that we can do about it. And the more we say he hates you, he hates you, he hates you, he she hates you, she's going to want to. Do it more. So, like... Because who are you talking to? But, bitch, you the Little Mermaid. Like, I'm just saying. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, you the Little Mermaid, and you letting this little... I can't name a DD. Is he this, a YouTuber or a rapper? He's, he's, like a, he's like a streamer rapper. Apparently, he has a lot of money from whatever the fuck. But you, the Little Mermaid, let the fucking spider monkey from TJ Maxx. Do you like that? You're an asshole. I don't like No, that. I don't like the little bitch either. I, no, I but simply... Like, no, but it's, and I get that age, you know, you find, you know, it's your first But that team. age, the nigga that's ruining your life and hating you, you get out before it's supposed death. to be fine. 
that age, that nigga that's doing that is supposed to be top notch pussy. He is supposed to be beautiful. If he's gonna be behaving, thank you. If he's gonna be behaving like that, he's supposed to be six foot. 12 and have abs on his fucking back. He's with supposed to with a, with a dick that him. he can swing over his fucking shoulder. That is who is supposed to be embarrassing you and hating you at that age. Not this little bitch. Not, I just not this can't, piece of I shit. I can't believe. And the fact that he said it was also like, I'd rather you just not say nothing, but you told us you did it on purpose. And, and you put it... You put it on streaming. It ain't even like you just released it on SoundCloud. You're getting paid. He's getting paid to embarrass that girl. He's getting paid money, albeit probably not so much because I don't think a lot of people are going to stream that. But he's getting paid money to embarrass that young that lady. That just, all right, man. And, and you got you to gotta let the girls go through it. It's nothing you can really do about it. Because when people were trying to get me to get rid of the nigga that hated me when I was at age, I was like, but I love you. Yeah. I, I love you. We're going to get married. No. You just gotta let you just no. gotta let it happen. She just got it. 23, 24. How old is TT baby? She 23. I think she's like twenty. I thought she was younger. I thought she was like twenty two. I think she's twenty three. Cause I think she was born in like two. Somebody look up how old uh, Halle Bailey is sure real she, fast. I'm kind of autistic with learning information like that. I'm y'all can't sure y'all, can, yeah, y'all not gonna look it up. It Somebody look it up. First. Don't worry about it. I got it. Halle and Bailey, March 27, two thousand. Yeah. Okay. 23. She twenty three. She twenty. She got let it. When happen. I was twenty three, it was bad. Right? I don't even remember some of them niggas' last names, so it'll be fine. She's she's gonna be fine, but she gotta. She, she gotta, gotta go. A, she, she gotta. gotta she can't. You, you can't though. go over the trench. You gotta go through. Because those, those are the ones that get you pregnant on purpose. <sighs> and you, and you gotta and not to project violence on her or anything. Because I don't I, mm -hmm. I obviously don't want anything to happen to her. But you just got like you know how Wendy Williams was like talking to Auntie Tab, and it's like now nah, is Wendy bitter? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Is she mean spirited? Absolutely, of course. But she yes. also knows what she's talking about. Yeah. And it's like she can be bitter and right. Yeah. And we can be jaded and old and bitter and aunties and all the things, but. We, Baby, yeah, that I mean, but you gotta let, you gotta let the girl. I think also, and I saw a girl on so some girl who I you know I I think you know she's a, a mutual of people that I know through you, so you might know her. I don't care. She had the vilest take on like being married and being engaged oh, on I'm Twitter, yeah. and she was like. We were people were talking about dating with intention, and she's like, it's "The ice cream shit." Yeah, I dated with intention, and now look, I'm engaged, but nobody wants my advice. First of all, did a quick search and found that nigga. No, I don't want your advice. I saw him. Number two, that's nasty for you yeah. to think that. One, a lot of bitches think that if somebody doesn't have a man, and not like they're seeing somebody or they have somebody, you know, they keep, you know, in their pocket. But like, if they don't have a boyfriend, if they don't have a husband, they think that the lived or global experiences of those women don't matter. And they absolutely do. Yeah. So for you We've to think that there. for some reason that you've scrounged up a husband, a, a fiancé from somewhere, mind you, the funniest thing, first thing I do when bitches do that on Twitter, I go search marriage, fiancé, ring, I said yes, all of those things. You literally only talk about getting married. Of course you're engaged. You're a mark. That's what you are. Of course. And that's of the thing course you're tunnel, engaged. You, somebody's going to marry me. You know, so you have that tunnel vision. Because I, I replied to like, because I, I, I stay out of that because people I know for real. Mm -hmm. But the grand scheme of that concept is women feel like, it's so funny because I say woman and woman the same exact way. And I people, know. And people think that that's a joke with Condi. No, bitch, that's how I talk. I know. I, I've moved past it. I, just, I can't do nothing about it. Because mm -hmm. wo woman, woman. 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 Nope. Woman. 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 No, man, no, baby. Woman. Woman. Now, let, let me do it. <laughs> women. Oh, I don't say women. Right. Think of woman. it the way that the niggas say it real funny. Women. Women's. Women. A woman, women. women. So I'm focusing on the E and A, but right. I should be focused on that. Oh. The A? Woman. Well, man. Oh, okay. Well, cool. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, now. No, no, no. Can't it talk. fucked me up for a second. That was on me. Okay. Yeah. Woman. Women. women. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay. So, I mean, I liked yeah, you the way like that it. you were. Thank you. Um, yeah. So women yeah. feel like. Yeah, she did it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Women yeah, yeah. feel like once they have a husband, that's it. We won. But it's mm. like, it's so many different paths to get a it's, it's so many different. Like, it's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. And you feel like when, that once I'm married, boom, I'm in the marriage section. 
And y'all just don't know what y'all don't. You don't know mm-hmm. how. You just so happen to be in the coffee shop where you met this nigga. And, then, the Bible study and like, the fuck. not trying to be funny sometimes, unless I know maybe about three bitches with niggas that I don't hate. You know, that are good niggas. I hate everybody's husband. Most of the time, when women are married, I actually don't really trust your judgment a little bit. I, I don't really Him? think, I, I don't think you make, you, certain bitches be talking to me about marriage, you can't tell me shit. I don't want any sort of advice from you, especially some of these boyfriends. I, you, you keep your little, uh, keep your little advice. I don't, that, I don't want that. Yeah. I was going to say something was going to be profound as fuck, but I just forgot it. It just completely. You got it. That didn't, what we talking about? We talking about boyfriends, we talking about husbands, mm-hmm. we talking about hating niggas, and we talking about. I'm not cheap. Oh, so yeah, that's another thing. Because even when people who think like that, even when I was in a relationship and my man, my man, my man, and they were treating me differently. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, you can come sit with us now. Mm-hmm. Now we respect you as a person because you have a man. So now we can be. And it was, it was that's why fun. I don't even really be posting niggas like that. Like I, I don't want y'all to. Outside of the fact, so when I was with Patrick, I was insufferable. Insufferable. I was my man, my man, my man, my man, my man. I love him. Pictures. Pictures from vacation, pictures from dates, my man, my man, my man. Oh, can you go out with us? I don't know. I got to ask my man. Let me see what we doing tonight. Like, it was very, and I think it was just because. I only knew you for like a month of that era. Insufferable. But you was talking about him a lot. Insufferable. But and honestly, so was I. Yeah. And that was last year. Mm-hmm. My man, my man, man. Oh, I love him. Oh, he's, I hate mm-hmm. these niggas, blah, blah, blah. But I love my man. But, and I had to get jolted out of that. Mm-hmm. And if we get back together, which we probably will. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just shut the fuck up about it. Maybe yeah. y'all leave me alone now. And I think that's one of the things. I learned my lesson. The thing for me with this platform all across TikTok, and I would say Twitter, Instagram, not so much, is that because I do have this whole, like, niggas are disgusting, like, thing happening, people assume, even my family, when we went on that trip, my grandmother said something along the lines of, like, if you keep, like, talking like that or thinking like that, like, you're not going to ever have nobody. Bless your sweet sugar soul. No. There's never a moment that I'm alive that somebody is not in love with me. Literally. Literally ever. There's never a moment that I am breathing on this earth that someone is not in love with yeah, me. Yeah, and also men are gluttons for punishment. It's like, niggas, you know I hate you. Why are you texting me? Niggas really love bitches that hate men, and they, they won't say they it. Love, they won't say they it. They eat this shit they up. They eat this and shit up. They know, love it. some dude who I just, I finally was free because he was being weird about the whole Carly thing. But, like, I finally blocked him because mm-hmm. stop being who's weird. Who's doing, you don't know this mm-hmm. person. But he always would like, if I post, I'm a very open about my politics and my mm-hmm. opinion on things. You know you have the opposite of that. Leave me the fuck alone. Mm-hmm. And he will always antagonize any post that would do about it. Mm-hmm. And I somehow w- ended up his close friends, which I was like, nah. No, get me out of here. And he had posted something like, oh, y'all see she home, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hey, take me off this shit, twin. See who home? You? Car- he was talking about the Carly thing. Oh, like, my oh, God. she was abducted. And it's like, take me off this shit. And I don't that's so and hateful. Something. But like. Why you? Why do you think I want to fuck you? And I think that's they try to prove like, oh, see, see, she's a big, big feminist, but she fucking me, and I hate bitches. Like, I don't. And know that's why I had to stop fucking with so and so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 That's why I had to stop fucking with him because this is bad for my brand. And people are finding this out and they think that I'm not about the shit that I say I'm about. Right. So no more hate sex for you, buddy. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all fucking mm-hmm. sick. Yeah. Yeah, because like. Nah. And they, they wanted do, that Carly girl to die. That's what that they was. They wanted that girl to die so they can be like, ha, ah, dang, another one bites up. But mm. now that she's home, it's like, hmm. She was making it up. And that's so fucking vile to say yes. that she was, they said she was with another nigga or some shit like that. And like We get snatched on a very, very regular basis and no one gives a fuck. The first time people give a fuck, they was like, oh, hold on, you too, too hot. Right. You go back and to your you people. Go back to your people. Because they didn't like, think, fire. and there was also a reward. So it might have been that they was trying to like, Get the reward or some shit. But no one turned in. She walked up to oh, her she own house, her, apparently. Oh, I, oh okay. I, didn't know I, I don't really dig. It, it makes me sad, so I try not to, like, dig too deep in mm-hmm. it. But it's like, oh, you snatched this girl, took a wig, all the things. But now you found out, oh, she got a network. And people were if like. If someone were to snatch me and take my wig off. Oh, you're evil. You're evil. You and like, with a baby. And you take my wig. I have I to dissociate. Like, and I, I, it's, I'm not being silly. That is the most immediate dehumanization. No, it does. For me to get snatched and. You take my you, wig you make off? make sure to take my wig off is crazy. It's crazy to make sure that people cannot identify. Oh, that was the most sinister. No, the, the baby sh- part, I've seen that on Criminal Minds. So the baby part, 
Because like serial killers trip. use that ruse too, like a tape we recording. We talked about yeah. that, like the baby crying. Mm-hmm. Like we're gonna go investigate. I'm gonna go investigate that. Image. Yeah, but you're gonna take my wig. You're gonna take my wig and then leave it there. And then also, whether I live or die, I'm never getting that wig back, ever. Oh Ever? Because even now, if it's my favorite week, now it's in the evidence bagging. It's in a ziplock at the police station. That that was so sinister to me. But that them niggas, they they wanted to be able to say she shouldn't have did that because I saw that a lot. That she shouldn't have pulled she over. Pulled check over, over she baby. should have been capable. Ladies, be careful. Mm-hmm. Ladies, do this. Ladies, do that. And she's brought home safe. Now with now is because they realized they had the wrong bitch. You realize people mm-hmm. give a fuck about this people girl. Give this girl a, yeah, people she care. She went to the HBCU. She's an AKA. Mm-hmm. Maybe the AKAs. Was oh we mm-hmm. gonna find this girl mm-hmm. and because when I saw like, oh no now now I'm really shaking now, now I'm definitely in so yeah. it's like y'all had the wrong bitch we brought her home and now it's like that's not good enough for y'all right y'all, y'all want because she should have died y'all wanted some Dahmer shit huh mm-hmm. y'all wanted her head in the goddamn pickle jar huh mm-hmm. and it's some sick shit niggas are sick um but yeah anyway anyway so I and think- they blamed the boyfriend too that was it but the boyfriend was a main suspect. They always blame the boyfriend, but like I mean, that is where that shit starts. I didn't snatch this girl. Can y'all please stop? Yeah, and actually look for her. Yeah. So I think we are nearing on time, but I do think that we need to talk about these things. So how do we want to go about? So you did a TikTok. So I did a TikTok. Yeah. And it got nearly a million views. Um, and so I looked at my my analytics on TikTok. My viewer, my male viewership is only about was only about eight percent in the time that. That video happened. The last time I looked at my analytics, it was 11, and then it was 13% of my audience had become male. Mm -hmm. And in that time, that video got reported. And I'm assuming that it got reported so many times that they immediately, when I appealed it, was like, no. Mm -hmm. It was maybe a minute and a half that I sent the appeal, and then they sent it right back. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did a video about how to know when a man hates you. And first of all, I used that language, and a lot of people said that's really dramatic. Like, to say, like, you know, if a man does A, B, C, D, and E, then he hates you. On the one hand, I was doing that for a dramatic effect and to be funny. But on the other hand, yes, and that's where we need to get to. That, hey, if you've been married to somebody for X amount of years and they always forget your birthday or don't do special things for your birthday or Valentine's Day, they fucking hate you. And that's just that. He don't love you. And it's so funny because people have been talking about friends now in that, like, how if your friend were to do it to you, you gonna stop being her friend. For sure. She got maybe once or twice to not fuck with you on. I don't play about that birthday. Right, on your birthday. But your nigga forget it. That video that came out from, I don't know which late night show it was where they were interviewing boyfriends. It's always Kimmel. 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 And we we laughing, Kiki. They don't know their wife's birthday. They don't know the kids' school, allergies, none of it. What's the other show? It was one of them love and marriage or whatever the fuck. And the daddy was home with the three kids. And, and he, he didn't like, know the boy was allergic he to was peanut like, butter. Oh, yeah, you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Dad, I'm allergic. Your baby could die. Your baby could die because this nigga's an idiot. But, like, also I was talking about other things in the video where I was like, you know, if he belittles your accomplishments or, you know, waits until you're having an accomplishment to really show his ass or to be nasty or not celebrate you, like, he hates you. I talked about, like, cheating. I talked about his mom, like, letting his mom and his sisters disrespect you, like, all of these things. It's like an umbrella, and then you got to really sit and say, like, this nigga hates me. This nigga hates me, and I think... I think that that's really important because people don't realize that like some niggas are just looking for an assistant who can fuck. Some niggas are just looking for an assistant who sucks real good dick and legally you cannot place an ad for that. So you have to date. You got to have a woman for that. You got to have a woman for that. And then you have poured everything that you have into this person. You're trying to learn them, learn how to be a better partner for them, be a better woman. You taking dick ride class. Stop going to them fucking classes. I'm sorry. I don't like it. Ain't no nigga. These niggas, not these going niggas to is not going to dick throwing to class you. for you. They are not. They're not going to coochie eating class for you. They're not doing none of that shit. You're doing all of this stuff to try to please a person who just wants you just happy enough to be able to serve of them just okay enough to be able to do things for them and they don't know your fucking birthday they don't know what size shoe you wear they don't know what size clothes you wear that is shit how you can sit in the house with somebody and not know and even that even goes down to like talking to niggas with daddies juniors mm. and they talk about their dad or like my dad just sit in that room I don't even know that nigga for real like he there I'm here ain't mm. I I'm, I'm in the graduation pictures I'm not really smiling like that I don't know this nigga teacher Niggas just be there. Did you see that video of that girl? And I'm, I'm, it probably was a skit because it had skit vibes, but it proposed an interesting thing for me. So the girl in the video was basically like, you need to come get this baby. Like, they had a baby together. And she's like, you begged me for this baby. 
I didn't want the baby. You begged me on your hands and knees for this baby. You told me you were going to be a parent to this child. You've not been here. So either you and your mama can come get this baby or she will be at the fucking firehouse because I want to be outside. I want to do things. I'm young. This is not what I expected from the my life. mayor had a baby to sit her down. And it, to sit her down. And so in the video, he's like, you a mom. This is what you're supposed to be doing. She like, where the fuck you be at? Like, this is your baby. He's like, I'm working. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to provide. Oh, goddamn work. No, no. And she got a job, too. It ain't even like she stay at home. Like, she got a job, too. She got to go to work. No, no, and like then, that um, ain't that an asshole about the dude who pressured the girl to have a baby, and she relinquished all um, mm-hmm. all custody to him and pays her child support on time, and he's like hates her, and mm-hmm. he's like you wanted a baby, go ahead. I've been in situations because I have to seriously consider with the things that are happening with women's rights, the fact that there could be a time in the rest of my childbearing years where I could be forced to carry a baby that I don't want to keep, and I've been with for sure one nigga. That if I have a baby with you, keep it. And I'm sorry to that baby. But I simply, either I'm going to have to keep it and you never see it, or you're going to have to keep it and I never see it. But I'm not doing this with with you. Like, And I think that that's fair. And women don't get that option, and that's part of the problem. It's like, it's never okay for a woman to abdicate her wifely and motherly responsibilities. It's never okay. And niggas it. But men get to up and decide, like, oh, I don't really feel like being a daddy this week. Like, I personal, but like, you know, my stepmom is the primary caregiver for my brother, and she asked me not to talk about her on here, but I'm really talking about my dad. <laughs> my dad just up jumps the boogie and does what he wants to do and does not see it as, like, a problem as a parent that, like, he could just go and work for three months in another state. And... Yeah. Shit will still keep moving without him. You know what I'm yeah, saying? But you and, know that. But you know that. And niggas know that. You know, it's like again, like having a mom is like I'm gonna leave all these dishes in the sink, and when I come back tomorrow, they're gonna be gone. I know who cleaned the dishes up, mm-hmm. but no, I don't. Right. I don't know what happened to them dishes. Right. You know, I'm my your mama came in there at three o'clock in the goddamn morning and washed the dishes and washed the fucking dishes. You left them in there, and then these moms with these sons, and I think a lot of times because a lot of Oh, sounds sound so sounds so gross. But a lot of these women don't end up having men in the home, and they raise their sons to kind of be like their emotional support baby. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so they end up coddling this kid because the yeah, child is not being a child. The child is being your substitute for having a person to interact with every day. So then that person comes to me wanting now, to be coddled. We got to deal with these niggas. Now we got to deal with these niggas because he your king. And you giving me hell. And again, as someone who was raised by a mama's boy, that shit is crazy. That, that man loved his mama down. My daddy loved his mama. Mm. But that was her king. Like, they didn't really have ultimates in the 50s, but she would have been driving one. Mm. And she would have had, had that haircut if it was out. Mm. I don't, she would have been down to that little game showing her ass. And Honestly. Those, and I'm glad that's a generational curse that was broken. And I'm so glad I don't have brothers because that nigga would have been a monster. If mm. I had a brother... He would be the worst nigga in the world. The way I feel about niggas having moms is the same way that I feel about them having baby mamas. I need her to be in jail or dead or something. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I, and I know that's not right, but, like, I can't do no mama's they be boy. too, uh, mm, they might, their mamas be crazy. Their mama, like, their mamas on TikTok, it was, what was it? It was some weird shit one of them mamas had posted. It's like, your son is eight. Relax. You're being disgusting. Or they was calling the little girls at school hoes, and it's just like... I went on a, I told you I went to breakfast with Patrick Mama once, and he got up to go to the bathroom. And she was like, are you good enough for my son? And I was like, ma'am, your son secretly does coke on vacation and <laughs> leaves his belt and wallet in his pants when he puts them in the washing machine. So I think we're all set. I think we're okay. I, I think we're good. Like, your man can't scramble. Your son can't scramble an egg. Your son can't do shit. So, at all. So I didn't grow up. And then, you didn't do that great. Mama asked me the same shit. She's like, you don't seem like the type of girl that my son you. Hmm? She a little chick, right? No, right. son of a bitch. That's how, that's how, Get it off. Oh, it's the other side. That's what I was saying. It was, I can't. Mm-hmm. Bless your heart. Just, okay, yeah. just lick it off. She was like, you don't seem like the type of girl my son usually dates. Come to find out. I'm exactly the type of girl you here. Saying one dates. type of bitch. You only date one type of bitch all at the same time. <laughs> Fucking Dahmer ass nigga. <laughs> weird <freak>. ass shit. <laughs> mm. But no, niggas hate you, man. And I really think that you got to. Yeah. And when you find, and also on a positive note, I got some good bitches, man. When you find a nigga that love you and you can tell genuinely that he wants the best for you, yeah. now he could always switch up. And that's, that's the scary, that's the scary, scary part. part. Cuz niggas will wake up. But <sighs> how what uh they said don't uh 
Don't call me white girl. Say you got to date the nigga with the bendable sneakers. Listen, I don't care <laughs> what that nigga look like. I don't care. If you find a nigga that loves you dirty and you can tell that he wants the best for you, I don't care what he got. He needs a job. And he needs the money. Now I need a bad bitch, though. And, and now if I need you, bad if bitch. you need shallow. a bad bitch, you need to be a bad bitch. But keep that nigga. Yeah. Keep that nigga. For okay, real. So you can keep that nigga. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll wrap it up. If they... you got my ex voodoo doll, stab it. <laughs> All right. I'm just saying. Right. Any of you hoes got a voodoo doll, my ex, stab it real fast, just in the leg. <laughs> Ooh, all right, y'all. All right. Bye. Bye.